And joining me is Stuart Cornthwaite, the Managing Director. So thanks for having me over here, Stuart. Can you start by sort of telling me a bit about the history of Cornthwaite here? Thank you for coming. So we started, uh, this business started in 2006 um, with one outlet at Bispram Green near Ormskirk. And then shortly after that, we kind of followed the, the John Deere um, policy of, of dealer rationalization and what they called the dealer of the future project. And in 2009, we purchased our neighboring dealer in Nantwich, uh, agricultural machinery. And then since then, we've expanded to Kendall, where you're at today, and then latterly, uh, Dumfries and Carlisle. And why did you choose John Deere? I don't think we, it was a case we really chose that. It, it's something I've grown up with, really. Um, so when I left school, I started work for my father's business, who's he's also a tractor dealer. At the time, he was a John Deere uh, dealer. So I left school, went straight into the family business. Um, I've grown up around John Deere. I've you know, probably one of the first words I said was John Deere or tractor. and <laughs> So I've kind of grown up around the brand. So I, I don't know really whether I chose it or it chose me, but we kind of just fell in yeah. amongst one another. But it's the only brand I've ever been involved with and ever sold. And I think that probably makes us a little bit different from some other businesses that have changed from one brand to another. And how many salesmen and staff do you have amongst all the depots you've got? So Total staff is just over 130. Um, in sales, we've 14, a team of 14 in sales, if you included myself. Um, and then we've got five, a team of five in what we call product and precision, which is precision farming and, and data management. Um, so, if you know, we, we, we align those guys really to, to the sales side because they do a lot of the product specialization. And do your salesmen sort of stay at the same depots and work in their specific areas or do they tend to sort of go around all the depots? They, um, they all have an, an area. Um, I mean, we've got one sales specialist who does nothing but use equipment. Uh, so he's, he's different in his, his, his office base, really. But the, the guys selling the new equipment, they're, they have their own area, uh, so to speak. And most of those would work from one outlet but we do have a small number that their area sits in between two outlets so some customers they send one way and some go the other so they would work out of more than one outlet and you were saying that you like have been brought up with john deere what are the advantages of a farmer buying a john deere compared to other tractor brands do you think how, how long have we got <laughs> um yeah to, to try and take my John Deere hat off really and, and try and be unbiased, I, I would say the the product perception of Deere, you know, the residual value of the product, um, I would argue that it, it looks after your money better than, than the competitive brands on the market. You know, the quality of the product over a number of years has, has stayed very consistent and also you know, the way the company's developing in future technology, they're, they're spending a lot of money and have done for a number of years on the future and, and how much technology is involved within the, the products. And I think all those things packaged together, it, it, it makes a prospect that nobody else can really offer. So they're almost like one step ahead when you're saying that they've developing that I, I would technology. think it's fair to say technology, yeah. They, they've been a, ahead for a number of years. Um, I have some good friends at Deer that were, were very heavily involved within the uh, precision farming aspects of the business back when they really kicked it off around you know late nineties, early two thousands. So they, they've been they've been in that market space for a long time, and I think now it, you can see they're really at the forefront of, of what you can purchase within the product. And why don't you talk to me a bit more about that precision farming and what John yep. Deere is doing with that? Because okay. that's something that. I've not heard perhaps other tractor brands yeah. talk about so, much. Yeah, so, I mean, people people think of precision farming still as, you know, a, a tractor that will, you know, um, be guided by a satellite, and that's really only one small element of what we offer now. So the the, the big thing with Deere in terms of uh, uh, our dealerships or our outlets are linked to all the products we supply. So we, we supply everything with what we call JD Link, so we can uh, monitor those tractors uh, we can understand when the, there's going to be a, a 
actually going to be a failure, a preventative failure. So Deere have put a lot of money into um, developing technology that enables the tractor to email us to let us know when certain sensors are out of place and therefore a failure may occur very mm. soon. So we can actually contact the customer and say, we're, we're watching your tractor and you know something's gonna go wrong and there's a technician on the way. So you know, as, as we all know, prevention is better than cure. Yeah. Um, so that's a, a big element of what we're doing now and remote diagnostics. So rather than sending a, cus a technician to a, a tractor to see what's wrong, come back to the yard, get parts, go back again, we can actually monitor and, and uh, diagnose the tractor remotely from the workshop. So we can just go first time with the right parts. And that will save a lot of time for the farmers when they need their tractors to do the jobs if that's happening. Time and cost, you know. Um, so that, that, that's a big element. Data management, um, the, the data that's uh, available from the tractor and, you know, which links into, you know, if you're spraying applications, cultivation, harvesting, we can hold that data, use it to link in with the other parts of the business. So that's it's a major part of what we offer and what we're doing now for customers. So, like I say, people think of precision farming as just driving in a straight line, but it's, it's far much more than that. And is there a specific model and spec that you sell most of here? Tra Tractor-wise? Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, I would say that the three, the three most popular models that we would sell would be 6215R, which is a large frame, uh, 215 horsepower tractor and a, and a 6155R that's been a very popular model for us uh, and then in the smaller tractors it would be a, a 6130R and then a 6120M so there's a, the, a new M series that came out last year that, that, that the 120M is a really popular model. I was going to ask about that what was the difference between the new tractor that came out yeah. and sort of the previous models um there's qu well quite a lot of differences but um they, they've changed the cab the whole layout of the cab there's different transmission options available in the new m and the biggest thing um to, to look at is the the sloping bonnet you know there's a high visibility bonnet which for a small tractor whether it's you know using it for loader applications or uh, you know in small tight environments the visibility is setting to none uh, so that that to look to, for the first time you look at that tractor the first thing you would notice is the bonnet and obviously sort of the GPS systems, the technology with that's coming through, more and more tractors are having those because they do help in terms of the overlapping of things, helping the environment a bit, helping the yeah. cost and time. What are John Deere doing to sort of help reduce the theft of these? Because they're incredibly easy to they are. take out. Yeah, I mean, um, I, I've seen an unprecedented amount of receivers, for instance, and, and kit like that that's, that's been stolen. and. Um, one thing and you know you'll see on the new 7R and 8R that have just were released uh, 12 months ago the receivers are integrated mm. so you know um, I mean you, you could still physically steal parts of them but rather than the 6000 receiver and the 3000 before mm. it which was clipped onto the front of the cab the receivers there are are integrated into the cab I don't know but I would think you know that you'd probably start seeing that on on you know the six series uh, when when those are updated eventually. Personally, we're doing quite a lot of work with the police to help them with uh, ways to to try and track these items and, and prevent it. But it, it's really difficult, if I'm honest. Yeah, it's you know de deer being being brutally honest. The simplest thing you can do is try and take the receiver off and bring it inside. But it isn't you know from, from a somebody at deer who's sat in an office thinking about it. It's, it it's not as practical when you're actually using the tractor and it's 10 miles from home and you're going home for two hours, you'd, you'd leave it on the tractor, wouldn't you? Yeah. Um, you know, we can pin protect them. That's what's one thing we can do. Uh, we can, uh, the 6,000 has got a lot more technology than the 3,000, but it, the, those things don't stop them from being stolen, unfortunately. So with the new ones, they'll stay on all the time? Yeah, the, the, the part of the, the cab roof, essentially, the, the built into the cab. And other machinery that you sell here then, do you want to talk a bit about that? Because yep. it's not just John not Deere. Not just John Deere, no, Deere being our a primary um, franchise. We also sell Kramer uh, telescopic handlers and, and wheel loaders. We've been selling those for a few years now. Uh, spearhead, um, hedge cutters, toppers, those sort of machines. Uh, K2 trailers uh, that we, we partnered with K2 just 
about just over 12 months ago and that gave us access to a rear beta spreader which was something that's quite a popular machine in in our area so um yeah we, we've been very pleased with that addition really because we've got also the the trailers the trailer range and the, the push trailer uh, which i think will become more and more you know as trailers have got bigger especially silage trailers they've gone from sort of 10 ton 12 ton 14 mm. ton 16 ton now you know you can supply a 25 ton push trailer which two of those will do what four 16 ton trailers would do so that i can see that being a market that will go forward red rock in terms of tankers and slurry equipment cherry products for the attachments and then also on the uh, turf and, and ground care aspect of our business we sell uh, apart from the dmos we've got the grillo equipment still wessex hater uh, so you know we, we have a good balance on that side of the business as well and if there's a farmer in like the north or like the area where they're possibly wanting to get stuff from you, what is the area you cover? I know you said where the depots are, but what yeah. area is So it? we cover from uh, just north of Shropshire all the way up through Cheshire, Lancashire, into Cumbria, and then now southwest Scotland. So um, kind of Castle Douglas, the mm. A75, um, and then up to kind of Moffat. Yeah, so, so quite a way. And then if we talk about sort of lockdown in the last year, it's obviously been really rare times for everyone. Yeah. How did that impact your business? Did you sort of have to furlough people or did the way you operated as a sales team change? So in terms of furlough, we didn't furlough anybody. Uh, we didn't furlough one member. And I, I was quite proud of that, really. Um, our biggest concern when the lockdown was uh, called in uh, was actually keeping our staff at work because we'd so much product that we needed to get out to mm. farmers. You know, it was March, as we know, and, you know, that's a pretty busy time of the year for our customers. We'd neck end of 100 tractors sat there waiting to, to go out and we needed to make sure we got them out and, you know, uh, delivered to the customers. So that was my main concern. Uh, to be fair, deer were pretty good in terms of the work they did with government to make sure we were classed as key workers and, and so on. So... Yeah, like I say, we didn't didn't furlough one person, kept everybody in. Um, in terms of how we operated, yeah, there was some massive t changes there. So salesmen, we kind of kept away from the depots. Anybody that can, could kind of practically work from home, uh, we, 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 we did that. But that's not as many as you think in our business because there's a lot you need to be in the office for to mm. do in terms of administrative work and whatever. So that wasn't as straightforward as, as you would think. Uh, but salesmen, we made those remote and we, we probably spent most of our efforts trying to make sure we kept our staff safe mm. and, and uh, distanced and, and also safe on farm, for both for themselves and also, also for the customers. So, you know, it, was, it, was a, it had a massive impact on logistics of how our business worked, um, but uh, we managed to get through it. Did you find that it was busier in terms of sales? I'm, I'm, I don't know if maybe farmers thought more about stuff they could change. I know it wasn't really different for them because they're on the farm 24-7 yeah. anyway, but what was that? It was it was quite tricky. You know, some customers uh, essentially didn't really operate differently. So we had to try and protect them from themselves in a way and also protect our own staff. Some customers were, were very withdrawn and understandably so. So we had to be, be careful how we interacted with those. In terms of actual sales, um, I think the lockdown does impact the agricultural businesses. It, it did impact ours, um, and I think the stronger relationship, the areas where you've got stronger relationships with customers, they were less affected because when you know somebody well enough, if need be, they'll just pick up the phone or whatever, and, and they, 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 they can do a deal on something without having to be face to face. I think where businesses and, and our business struggled. Uh, was in our areas there where we're not as well known and our newer outlets because we don't know the customer base as well mm. for as many years and it's hard to you can't really build new relationships under a lockdown no. scenario you can maintain and manage existing relationships but it's hard to to build new ones and so what's the relationship would you say between your salesmen and the customers what kind of approach do you like to go for well anybody who's who understands the sales environment is there's everybody tends to operate differently don't they but mm. as a business you know we we want to 
we want a very very open and trusting relationship with our customers um we, we want them to trust us and 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 we work hard to do to, to, to make sure we've got that relationship and you know that that takes a lot of managing and it takes a lot of all you need to do is, is slip up once and and it can be ruined so we take that very seriously um and i think through lockdown for instance that that really came to the fore and, and made us feel like we, we do do quite a lot right with customers because it, it you know they, they, they stuck with us and then well, as lockdown eased obviously the agriculture and country shows came back yeah um did you go to any of those and what was it like yeah. to kind of see your customers and people again it, it was good I, you know i was concerned for a while that some shows might never come back and i, I think the lockdown at, at one point you know probably made people think you know this the world's probably going to change forever i'm not convinced you know i think it might change to a certain extent but not drastically so yeah we did attend a few shows the ones that were still on uh, and they were very well attended and i think a lot of people just were happy to be in an environment where they could see other people again and then if we talk about brexit and how that's impacted uh, your business in terms of exporting tractors now yeah. and how is that working yes yeah, so that was a big source of concern really as as, as we approach the sort of d-day of brexit because mm. uh, we export quite a lot of used equipment uh, all over the world and yeah it has affected how we do things i don't say think brexit's been the the primary or the single reason why certain countries that we used to deal with are we're doing less with but it's just made it harder work you mm. know we, we can still export machines where we used to be able to export machines too but the amount of paperwork and the the boxes you need to tick to get those mm. items around the world, there's a lot more work involved than there used to be. But uh, you know, I wouldn't say Brexit's kind of been the reason why people aren't buying from the UK. It's it's, it's just harder work. Yeah. Are there any plans for Cornthwaite Group to expand or set up another depot in the future? Or is it all sort of top secret? <laughs> no, there's, the, 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 there's nothing top secret. There's there's nothing in the the fire at the minute you know we're just concentrating on um doing the best we can do in the area that we, we're working and um, we've got a new outlet in dumfries which we've got to work hard to get that working as, as we'd like it with a uh, an outlet we're moving into in carlisle november so you know our focus is is doing the best we can in the area that we're, we're working in 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 the future maybe yeah i think from from where deer seem to be you know they, they, they clearly want to rationalize the dealers even more um they they don't seem to pull any punches with that so yeah you know we've we've got um we've got growth aspirations in our mind but uh, one step at a time really we want to we want to do what we do right first and then move on from there later and keeping on sort of talking about the future what do you see sort of the future of tractors being? Do you think it's hydrogen, electric, hybrid, sort of, obviously people are getting very environmentally conscious now and sort of the general public want to see farmers doing their bit. What do you think yeah, is gonna happen? Yeah, this is just, you know, my own personal view. I, I don't know, you know, what deer are planning or, or in any way. I, I really struggle to see that electric can actually um, solve this issue from a, an agricultural tractor perspective i think the amount of battery space that would be needed to to put into the tractor wouldn't be wouldn't work and at the end of the day it's a it's a finite metal that they're putting into these batteries with lithium isn't it so you know we're going from one precious commodity in, in whether it would be oil or whatever to, mm. to to lithium so for me i would say the logical step is hydrogen because it's, it's quite an abundant gas that can be made quite easily uh, providing it can be stored and um, used safely I, I would say hydrogen's got to be the future especially for, for the agricultural industry i know there's other things being played around with but um, I, I, I can't see past hydrogen personally yeah and so finally just to sort of to sum up so if you were to have a john deere what would your like spec and model be if you were to have like your perfect tractor and am i only allowed one <laughs> no, you, you could, uh, well, I say John Deere because that's what you sell, so yeah. like, <laughs> you can yeah. be fair. But what, if you were to have maybe one or two, what would your ones be? Just purely from from what I see as something that I, I like to look at, probably a 130R, compact tractor, plenty of horsepower, with a, uh, an auto power gearbox, 
so that we, we sell a lot of auto power now which is the IVT transmission mm. um, uh, IVT five years ago we were probably something we'd supply in 25 30 percent of what we sell I, I bet it's more like 80 to 90 percent wow. now yeah uh, so yeah something like that or, or a 155 you know that's a, a popular tractor we sell and, and um, one of those two really and finally, what would you say makes Corn Fleet Group different to other dealers in the country? That's a tricky question. I would say we're straightforward people. Um, we, we're down to earth. We understand our customers as best as we can. Uh, we, we're not frightened to, to learn. We know we're not perfect, but we, we're, we're trying hard to be. Um, we do what we say. We have, we have, I believe we've got a, a, a great say do factory if we say it, we do it. And you know, we, we work hard to, we, we understand the needs of our customers or we try hard to do that and, and make sure that you know, if we're gonna sell something, we wanna stand behind it. And I think that's what customers wanna see. Great, well thanks for joining me today, Stuart. That's been great. Thank you.